All right, everybody, we got a special treat, and welcome back to the 2023 Derby City Classic. This is the One Pocket Division. This is round one, and you see on your screen we have the legend, Efren Bata Reyes versus Mark Payton. This is, like I said, round one of the 2023 Derby City One Pocket and it should be fun. I am your host, Scott Frost, the Freezer. And we are here. Like and subscribe on YouTube, Railbirds TV. Like and subscribe. Want to give them a quick shout out. Thank you so much for being an extra stream here at Derby City Classic. Efren wins the lag. And he goes to break in the lower left corner. Catches the kiss, the common kiss that a lot of players have been catching. It's the dreaded kiss, we call it. And you'll notice right away that Mr. Payton has a clear shot at the one. Now it all depends on what he wants to do with this one. It does bank clean. So you can pinch it with a little low right. And slide up there towards the five. Obviously not that high. Oh, you've got to do something with the one, I believe, here. Maybe he doesn't like it. Okay, so he's elected to put something on his side, and that's not terrible. There's nothing. I, I can't fault him for that. Maybe the, he didn't feel like the one went. So I'm, I'm not going to fault him for that shot. He actually did quite well. He's covered Efren up on the stripe on Efren's on uh, his side, so he's covering Efren up on the stripe on the top, and he's covering Efren up on the stripe on, on Mark's side, so those two stripes on the right side. Is Efren going to kick at that stripe? Yes, he is. And I know Efren's game quite well. We've been playing since I was uh, 18 years old. He started out giving me 12 to 4, and I never liked it. I never liked it. Till I grew up a little bit. Um, he's threatened Mark here with with a long straight in shot, and at this point, it's it's one of those shots where you're pretty much gambling the game on. You can notice that he's fairly flat or straight on it, so I would definitely want to look around, and he is looking around. The problem with this shot is, unless it, and if he doesn't get low enough, he doesn't really have anything else. Well, he's hit it well, but as I stated, if he doesn't get low enough, he's kind of trapped himself. Um, and, and due to that angle, I don't even know that he could have gone forward and gotten a bank on the lower 12. And you'll notice on your screen here with this great view that he is kind of in a pickle. And he's put himself there. Uh, made a great shot under the circumstances, but you've got to go forward if you're going to shoot that shot. You can't shoot one to lose the game. He's going to come off the five. He's using high. I don't know what he's planning on doing with the cue ball. Yeah, okay, so he he planned on thinning that 5 and bringing the cue ball 2 rails into the back of the 11 and four, 11 and 8. I think that if I was him, I would have maybe tried to clip the 11 or the 7 and just bring the cue ball to the bottom rail. Uh, and if he didn't have that, if that wasn't available, I'm pretty sure it was, then he could have taken a foul because there's nothing worse than letting this man get a shot to run the rack. <clears throat> this is a race to three. We are... Well, he's... He's he's overdrawn that ball. He wanted to come two rails for the cut on the three. I believe he's too steep here. <clears throat> Maybe this view has got me a little tricked. Well, leave it to him. What a cut shot that was. <clears throat> and you'll notice when Efren's cutting balls, most of the time on extreme cuts, he's leveling out using center ball. 
Now he played a little carom there. And he hasn't covered it up either, so he's left mark. Let's take a look at this cut. Okay, it's a little better on that angle. But uh, he didn't hit a single rail going in. Nice clean shot. He's left mark across on the 7, and it definitely crosses. He can use a touch of high left or high right. High left kind of opens the ball up more, and you can hit it a little fatter. High right, you're going to come in at a sharper angle. This is all about speed. You want to play the cue ball behind the 9. Okay, he cho he cho there's nothing wrong with that. He chose to hit it more aggressively, put a pinch of inside on it. And there's nothing wrong with it. I don't know Mark Payton. I don't know his experience at the game. And I'm definitely not here to pick on Mark. I will explain what I think he could or should do. But I am not at the table, and he is. Now here I would look at moving the 9 and 6 at the same time and possibly putting him behind the 4. You could put them both on your side. So I do notice a little inexperience, but that's what we love about the game, right? Uh, here, here's a man that probably hasn't played a lifetime of one pocket, and he's getting to play the best to ever live. So that's pretty cool. And we would all love to see Efren do great in this tournament, but it starts with the first game, and it starts with the first match. I don't know if he's going after this to make it. He could. Yeah. I think he's left the four. Yeah, he's. I know he's left the four. <clears throat> the four passes. I don't know that the nine passes the six, but he can play the four. I don't know that he can get up. Uh, if he uses a touch of right-hand English, he can get up behind the nine. You you definitely want to get that cue ball behind the six and nine. I'm pretty sure the nine plays. But that six nine looks pretty close to wired if you don't pocket this four. Uh, nice clean hit. Nice clean hit. He, uh, he's gotten elevated. Good and bad there. He's moved the six to where the nine isn't exactly wired up. And the bad part is he's elevated over the two, and I don't believe it goes anyway. So now he's got a decision to make. I couldn't fault him for trying to maybe edge the 13 off the 15 and get it close to his pocket and leave him long up there on the top right diamond. If you get something by your hole, you're applying pressure to Efren. I also couldn't fault him for doing something completely passive. And that's what it looks like he's doing. I really would, wouldn't want to move this 9 unless I had to. And maybe he has to. Both players with three balls now, playing for five apiece. And, and if you'll notice what I'm talking about, and he's kind of put that nine in a bad position for himself. So Efren has a couple options. He could just bank the six. Uh, he can miss the kiss on the five. So he's going to play the five down into these balls. Uh, he couldn't miss the kiss. He's gotten fortunate. We call that the Filipino luck factor. And it is a factor. So you better factor that in next time you play one of them. <laughs> uh, he's left Mark. He's left Mark pretty difficult here. Actually, very difficult here. He's got to contend. I, I would consider coming off the right edge of the eight and laying him down here on this bottom rail. Anything else is pretty haphazard. Uh, 
Uh, okay, it's actually turned out okay. It's going to get worse for him, though. He's uh, he's going to be staring down the pipe of that five ball now. Uh, he's mishit that just a hair, but it's it's okay. He's kept keeping the pressure on Mark. Yeah, we obviously see the 11. He could come off of that 11. It looks almost natural. Maybe he has to put a touch of running English, which would be left. Get him down here below this 5 and cross the 11 to his side. I'm not sure he might be a little straight for that. Let's see what Mark's thinking. I'm sure he's a bit nervous. Getting to play a legend such as Efren, or the legend. It looks to me like he wants to kick at this five. I just don't see any protection. That's that's the concern. Uh, I think he's going at the balls now. I actually kind of liked the shot. Uh, the, just maybe the wrong time to shoot it. Looked like that corner pocket was a big pocket for that carom. This one's going to sting. Efren playing for five. And you'll notice they're all there. And then this four doesn't help either. It, uh, it definitely plays. Efren's going to pick pick as many off as he can using the 11 first, then I'd assume the 8. But I'm not at the table. Let's see what he chooses to do because 9 times out of 9, he is right. Okay, he's chose to come all the way down. He... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I felt like maybe if he just stunned over for the eight and then came down a little later on. But if the four passes, he's in great shape. You know, he can cut the six. It's almost perfect, actually. Come back out for the nine. And now he's even gotten perfect on the two, so he doesn't have to shoot the nine. He's playing for two, though. And it looks like Mr. Reyes is going to take game number one in match number one in round number one. That friend Reyes takes game number one. And he's going to go ahead and run a couple extra just, just for the crowd. And it's Mark Payton's... Opportunity to break the balls. And that game possibly could have gone either way there. Mark had a had a couple little opportunities. Welcome back, everybody. I am your host. This is Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. And we are at the 2023 Derby City Classic One Pocket Division. Haven't seen Mr. Payton play before. Does look like he can make a shot or two. He's He's got some ability, there's no doubt. I don't know of his experience. He did overlook a couple shots, but I can't, I can't count that as inexperience. Uh, a lot of times when we get nervous or starstruck, which is very possible with the guy he's playing, you don't think is clear until you get into the game, right? So let's see if he settles in in game number two. Like I like how far he's put that cue ball out. Puts le less pressure on the second ball. Could even afford to go left a couple more inches. But notice he hasn't made the caught the kiss. And he's broke the balls quite well. 
Ephron immediately looking at the one. Ephron is an unconventional player. So if I called something, and I know his game, I really do know his game as good as anyone. If I called something, I wouldn't be surprised that he shot something different, though. Oh, yeah, he's he's drugged this cue ball all the way down and done very well with it. And if you'll notice, he's kept him on the left side of that 10, which is going to cause problems for Mark. Only reason is the cue ball, you know, the cue ball is going towards the purple four if he decides to bank it. If he wants to try and draw it in between the 15 and 6, that's okay. But you're just really focused on the cue ball. If you're going to bank at this 10, you really want to put all your efforts into the cue ball. Now looking at coming off the 11 or 13, two rails into the stack behind the 5. I don't know. Looks like he's hitting it a hair thin, and he has. He's got a good rub. He's got a good rub there. Nothing wrong with that. That's going to slow this this uh, young whippersnapper down, Mr. Reyes. Efren looking to possibly kick at the seven some type of way. I couldn't fault him for just taking a foul below it. Oh, he's overhit this. Yeah, he's definitely overhit this, and he and Mark has earned himself a shot. This is where you take a couple deep breaths, long, slow exhales. Send oxygen to the bloodstream, which slowly calms the nervous system down, which is a scientific fact. It's a pretty good tip for everyone there. If you're nervous, take three deep breaths, slow exhales. It sends oxygen to the bloodstream, calms the nervous system down. Coming over for the seven. Doesn't want to get elevated. Oh, he's done well. He's gotten kind of straight here. I think he's close enough where he can cheat it just a little bit. But I don't have a problem with drawing it back to the bottom of the 15. If you could draw it straight back, you notice that gap there that the cue ball is on with this great angle. He could draw it straight back. Just catch the bottom of the 15 and you're guaranteed a shot on the 6. If you can cheat it a little and come below the 6... This is okay as well, but a pretty big opportunity that you don't want to let slip through your hands right now. Uh, he caught the six first. He's still got a shot at it. See, this is where I might want to regroup if I'm Mark. He got down on this ball awful quick. Yeah. And just a couple little things that I'm noticing. Maybe a little frustration when that heart rate's up. When that heart rate's up, so is the pool game. You tend to want to speed up. Kicking behind this or crossing it over. Oh, he's done. He's done nicely. He caught a good kiss there. I believe that Mark has a three railer on this 14 and he can stun forward behind the pack. Don't know that he's going to shoot that. Efren owes one. Yeah, you got to kind of, you got to really got to be careful if you want to do something with the three. It's, it's dangerous. You're not going to get more than one, I don't believe. And you're going to send everything to Mr. Reyes' pocket. Now he's looking at the 14. But he's gotten down again awful quick. 
Uh, this is okay. I'm not in love with it, but it's not, you know, he didn't lose the game on the shot, and, and we're always looking to not lose the game on a shot. So it's okay. Efren might be kicking at this 13 or 3. If he kicks at the bottom of the 3, it might even be better. He's going to hit it hard. He's done okay here. He's covered the 6 up. Uh, he's got to take a look at the 12. Does the 12 bank? Can you cross the face of it? Send the cue ball up towards the 1. Yeah, he might be looking at it now. I think the kiss is real close. I think these balls could kiss somewhere up towards the side pocket, just right of the side pocket. Yeah, I feel like this kiss is really close if, you, if you're shooting it to make it. Unless you rub the three. Oh, he's rubbed the three. He's rubbed the three and he's hit it like perfect. What a shot. I believe that's his lovely wife over there on the right side of your screen. She gave him a couple taps of approval. And I don't blame her. He's got a couple ways he can shoot this three. He can roll forward. I don't know that he's... I think he, he could get a shot on the 13 if he does go forward. I, I I don't know about this. You don't get a lot of opportunities to beat Efren Reyes. If you're going to shoot at it earlier, you definitely got to shoot at that 3 now. Yeah, so here's the problem, guys, with that shot. And I'm not picking on Mark, but you lose your position. Um, when, you, when you finally do have a position to, to win the game, and this game is all about percentages, you really got to take advantage of it. Um, whether you make the ball or not, at least you can go down feeling comfortable that you are in the right position and you shot the right shot at the right time. And that's what this game is all about. Listen, I've got no problem with two rail in that one at the right time. He's going to play a ticky. Yeah. What a look at this shot. He, I know his game quite well. And I knew the way he was lined up, he was going to play that ticky. And that's a that's a three cushion shot, kind of. Or a, uh, I think it's called a bulk, bulk billiards, bulk line billiard shot. What a play that was. And, and like I said, Mark Mark lost his position by two railing that one, and I don't even believe the two railer went. Yeah, he's not going to get a rail there. The good news for Mark is I believe that he's had a ball lead, or at least tied ball count now in both games. And that's an achievement itself against the man that he's playing. He's going to go back one here. Efren looking to probably play this 13-3 combination. Lay the cue ball down. <clears throat> Cheap gasoline. That's hard to find this day and age. But he's hit it quite well. It was going straight in the heart. I don't know that Mark has an avenue to even pocket this three for Efren. Might have to come off the six. Uh, that's pretty much all he's got. Unless he can see enough of the 11 to make it with the 11 and stick him under the three. This angle, it looks like he might be snookered by the, the one. But at the other angle, I feel like he can see enough of it. And, and, and I think he can if that's what he's looking at. So you just want to cut the three a little bit. The 11 will go up table. Don't draw it. Punch it. Oh, he's caught the one. Disaster. So it was tight. Very tight. 
Efren has an array of choices here. I'm assuming he's going to come between the three and fifth, or excuse me, the thirteen and fifteen. Just like so, he doesn't want to get on the rail. He's got a good rub. Yeah, he's going to go into the one here. He's going to he's going to avoid shooting that fifteen, uh, that stripe in front of him. He's going to shoot this thirteen, I think. Well, there we go. He is going to hit the one, so he's going to have to hit this with some pace. Oh, he's drawn out of it. What a shot. Now, if he can reach this, I feel like he's going to shoot the six and carry an angle over to the one. There we go. Efren is plus two balls now. Continue to carry his angle. Stay above the balls. Needs it to bounce. Well, I think he's got enough to enough to work with here. He's going to probably go forward. Yeah, I don't know that he's gotten enough out of it. Oh, he's actually gotten perfect here, I believe. This is a shot a lot of one-pocket players like. Yeah, he's concerned that the cue ball is going to catch the edge of that 14 just right. I think that it's okay. This angle looks much more difficult. He could bank the 7 and just freeze him to the 14 as well. But I expect him to cut the 9. Oh, he's making me look bad. What's he shooting here? The 7, right? Yeah, and the carom. Uh, he sold the 8 out here. And they both knocked each other out of the way. That would be a cool shot to see a replay of. They definitely both knocked each other out of the way. He was playing the 5 and the 7. Well, let's take a look at it. So watch the 5. The 5 is going and the 7 was going and they both kissed each other out. Great replay there. And Mark has found himself in another pickle, but I believe the eight goes. I'd like to get a... The eight definitely goes. You can spin this eight in with left-hand English. Um, he, he's not seeing it. And, and I get that it's not easy. But it can get you out of trouble, right? You spin the eight in with a little bit of follow. If you don't get a shot on the three, then at least you've probably got a click... Now he's looking at it. You've got a clear opportunity to pocket the five. Yeah, it's a long ways from him. It looks like he's got trouble. Going to be very tough for him to reach it. He can come off the nine and carry him the five in. If he wants to prolong the agony, I think that that's probably the shot. Send the nine. Uh, see, I I would have hit that a little heavier or a little more full, putting the nine to my side. That way you can play with the angle to pocket the five. Efren's got some choices here. He could bank at the seven. He could bank at the nine. I, I, I even think that he can see that the 15 if you want to two rail that this is this is very very steep oh oh look at this roll boy oh boy Efren Reyes did you get a little lucky there he's smiling and I think that's probably the key to his good fortune over the year but it's probably got a little more to do with his Superb play. Is Mark attacking here? I just don't see any future. 
Oh, nice shot. Very well done. Very well done. He's got a little unfortunate again. He's left something on, on the 9. After looking at the 14 or the 2. I think he's looking at this 14 ball. Yeah. Look at this cue ball too, guys. Yeah, he's cut him off from the from the seven. He can definitely kick to this seven. He can also kick to the to the fourteen. I don't see anything up there, Mark. Let's start looking down here to your lower right. There you go, buddy. Just a nice soft kick with a little bit of right hand English behind the 14. I think the 9 cuts the 7 off from the bank as well. I must say that is if that's I think that's a an extension of Mark's beard and it's uh highly legendary. Is he coming off the two? Oof. Very difficult. Can you see that? Oh he's coming off the two. Yeah, that's just a little too tough. A little too tough. He had room to kick behind those balls. It's going to cost him the game, I believe. Efren playing for two. He's actually gotten a little steep on this seven, but I think he's going to be all right. Yeah. Okay, he's played to overcut it. Nice shot. The thinner you hit that ball with inside, the more you're going to throw the object ball down and playing for one. Mr. Efren Batarez takes game number two. And he wants to go to nine. I think he's just going to go to nine every game this game. Either that or he's practicing his left-handed game. So let's see if Efren can avoid the kiss this time. We'll notice uh, the very first game he, he caught the ball and sold out a, a little bit of a bank. Boy, this is your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. But I, I noticed Efren racked those balls. He literally just rolled the balls up, and it didn't look like he cared about freezing any of them. Yeah, he must have, because he's broke them a lot better this time. And this is a race to three. And we have a lead from Efren Reyes, two to nothing. Mark has got a little bit of trouble to work with right now. I don't think that Mark is real comfortable with kicking from what I've noticed so far, and that just tells me he's, he's lacked experience in the game, and it's totally understandable. Now he's got the option again to graze off the six and just come down to the bottom rail below the 11. He'd have to clip it thin. He can also kick to the bottom side of the 11 with a little speed. This is very tough. You've got to be such an accurate thin hit here. Oh, and he's done it. So if he can do that, there's a lot of things he can do. Because that's a very difficult shot to gauge how thin you're hitting that ball. Efren's going to probably fire away here at this 11. Yeah, and he is attacking. He's overspun it. He's overspun it, but notice what he's done with the cue ball. Yes, notice what he's done with the cue ball here. He's kept he's kept Mark off the six. 
In other words, he's utilized the stack to keep Mark from pocketing the six. Nothing else seems to go. I would immediately turn to this 11 ball or look at the two, trying to sweep everything over to your side. And if you can shoot the two into the right edge of that five, you might be able to sweep everything. But you've got to either draw your cue ball all the way back or stun it forward. Well, looky here, folks. Power one pocket. What a shot. Let's get a replay. Look at this. Watch this. He's aiming to the edge of the five. He's taken everything out, and he's literally crossed the five to his pocket. He hit it so well. What a shot by Mark Payton. Now, I know the two passes, I believe. Stay down, follow through. Oh, it came, it went off the six. Wonder if we could get a quick replay of that. I don't know, but it looks like to me it nudged the six. Probably won't get a replay because he's shooting at the 13 so quickly. Neither here nor there, he has made it. Let's see if it moves the six. Yes, yes, he played it off the six. Well done, Mark. Cutting at this 13. You want to hold the cue ball or come all the way around? One of the two. I don't mind him using low left. There you go. Well, he's going to try and kill it. He could double himself up if he does this. Oh, he's held it nicely. Impressed there. Very impressive. Okay, what do you do here? Mr. Payton, do you come forward and try and come around for the stripe nearest the cue ball? Or do you roll down and maybe try and bank the one? Oh. Oof. He was real close to scratching if he catches any of that one, but he made a great shot on the two. And once again... And this isn't a good sign for Efren in his future in the tournament. I know this is the first round, but Mr. Payton's got another ball lead. Now, I got a feeling that one of these years Efren's going to win another Derby one, one pocket. He just has that magical spirit to him and seems to do things that nobody else has ever been able to do. And I'm just guessing here, but I think that he's won six of the Derby City One Pocket events. He's two railing this nine. Watch this shot. Yeah, he's done. He's done very well. I don't know that Mark can see it. I think he can see the left edge of the nine, which means it's crossable. He's taking a look at that now. And here I am again, right? You've got a 4-0 to zero ball lead. I am i wouldn't blame him if he attacked. Can he two rail this, just two rail this out? Okay. Played a ticky shot. Nothing wrong with that. Efren's going to put him up on the top right long rail. Well, you want to hit it harder than that. All right, Mr. Payton. Decisions. Decisions. I can't fault him for shooting at the one. Now, here's, here's how I look at it, guys. If the defensive shot is as difficult as the offensive shot, and the reward from the offensive shot gives you a chance to win the game, there's your sign. Take the offensive shot. And he is. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looked like he lifted up just a hair there. Little body movement. I don't think he's... Has he gotten Efren snookered? I don't think he has. I think Efren can pocket this 14. Looks close, but Efren's real good at swerving. Oh, yeah, he's he's got full ball. This is, this is a bad, bad sign for Mark Payton. Efren playing for seven. And in advance into the second round. I don't know that he's going to make this, is he? It's held up. Here we are with another opportunity, and I know that he can bank at this four. <clears throat> I can't... F yeah, this is a great angle. Prove me wrong. Nothing new there. He can possibly bank at the eight, but he can't bank at the four. He is cut off. And I do think you can shorten that eight up. I do think he goes. What a great angle this is. Then the reason I'm talking about this eight is because it's guaranteed position on the nine. If you want to just pinch it with a tip of inside English. Running into the three. Stopping your ball there. Hmm. At worst here, if he doesn't feel good about it, anything, you can one rail kick to the long rail or short. And pocket the one. Yeah, where's your cue ball going if you do that? He's looking at pocketing the one with the nine. Hmm. Well, plan B. If he if he didn't play that, I mean there's a chance that he just played to follow the cue ball and make it. Very well done. Efren has two balls. Mark Payton has four. You know Efren wants to bank this nine. But I don't think it, it's free. No, it's not free. Did he scratch? There's a good chance he played it like that, by the way. As a matter of fact, I, I would believe or tend to believe he played it that way. Well, there's nothing to look at. You need to remove the nine, Mark. Very good. He is. He's aware. Use a tip of right hand English. Catch the right left side of the nine. The left side on our screen. Uh, it looks like he used the other English. So a tip of right hand English allows the cue ball to kill off that long rail on the left. And instead he used the opposite English which carried it more speed up towards the stack. Selling out this four ball. Oh, he's hit it short. Notice what he did there, though. He did play position. It's the small things that Efren does that are deadly. A lot of times not noticeable. Especially playing one pocket. He forced an angle. Played to shorten the ball up and clip the three out of the way. In case he made the bank, he could play the eight. Yeah, I don't, I don't fault him for shooting this. He's got a fortunate kiss, in my opinion. Efren looking at the 11-7 combo to stick him behind the 3 and 8. Or is he just going to go right at this 15? Get his 1. Oh, he's hit it perfect. He's for some reason unhappy with it with the fling of the wrist. Now he's going to go at the 4. He's overcut it just a hair. But 
one thing you'll notice with Efren's pool game is that his his ball speed is typically just impeccable. Does the nine pass? I don't know that it does. And once again, he could kick behind the four. He's eyeing it up, so he believes it might bank. I think it's tight. He could he could pocket this, and, and if it goes, I can't blame him for shooting it. The problem is that I don't think you can defend with shooting this. Okay, so he played it intentionally into the stack. He just didn't get the cue all forward enough. And that was kind of what I meant anyway. Whether you're banking the nine straight in or into the stack, it's just really nothing to hide behind. And when you're leaving an open cue ball against any top player, it's typically going to come back to haunt you. Efren's weighing out his decisions. I can't fault him for cutting at the 10, but I really almost like the 12. He's got a big pocket with the 10, though. You could bank the 12 and follow down two rails behind the 3. Bank the 12 into the 4. You could also bank the 12 and stick him on top of the 7 and 10. Using those as protection. Yeah, it's, it's hard for him to turn this 10 ball down. It's such a big pocket. Well, it's a big pocket if you hit, hit it good. He's overcooked it by a quarter mile. But his pocket looks like Times Square on New Year's Eve, so that's an issue. Yeah, and I don't think you can do anything with this three mark. As much as you'd like to, as much as I'd like you to. Notice the 8-10 combination lined up for Efren's pocket. You are going to have to disturb those balls in some manner. If not, your round one is going to be looking really bleak. And I like that, actually. I think, that, I think you're going to get a lot of motion. Shooting this seven into the top side of the four. Just don't know where the seven's going. Don't exactly know where the four's going. Okay, the four is going in. I knew the seven wasn't going to go too far away. But I think he'll take that. I'd be happy with that. And notice the positioning on the 8. The 8's fallen right in front of the side pocket, so the long rail bank is no longer. Efren is looking at possibly pinching this 3-1 rail. Mm. Really, when he's looking across the 3 to his side, he's more worried about the cue ball. He's looking at the 8. given this a little concern or maybe I should say he's giving this inning a little respect look at the eight there he can't he can't one rail it he can three rail it. following his cue ball did he get it over yeah very well struck very good cue ball yeah mark might want to take a look at the two railer on that eight ball. The problem is the ten becomes a huge ball for Efren. Really anywhere up table is kind of haphazard. Efren can cut at that ten from just about anywhere up table. 
So you better get this close, my friend. Following it. Hey, he's hit it short. A little short. But he's done well with the cue ball. Efren going to cross this eight. Oh, he's double kissed it. Don't jack him up. He's got a shot on the eight. He can come up for the 12. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to avoid shooting at this three. I'm going to take the eight because the 10 doesn't hamper me shooting at the eight. Shooting at the three, you're hampered by the 10. Just think about being in Mark's position, right? He's got an opportunity to beat Mr. Ray's at least one game. Pretty cool. This is the beauty of the Derby City Classic. Oh, and he's done well. Slow down, Snow. Ugh. I don't know that that's where he wanted to be. If you take, take your time, look at the t cut on the 10 here, Mark. You could cut at this 10, bud. Yeah, I think he, he got a little ahead of himself there and didn't look at the whole situation. He could have diced the 10 with center cue ball. And kind of, even if he doesn't make it, the cue ball is going to end up kind of where it's at now or even more to the left, which forces Efren to do something defensively. But now he can cut the 10 because it was still there. But maybe Mark knows something we don't know. Because it's worked out for him again. Mark playing for two. Yeah, this this 12 ball is no bueno. I'm hoping that he crosses this 10 up table. I don't know that he can see all of it. But shooting at the 12 is really kind of like um, not good. I don't see a future. The only future is if you pocket it. But I don't believe it carries any position. Okay. Very good, Mark. Mark. Very good. Live to fight another day, at least for another s two or three seconds. Efren going to take a look at which one he wants to bank. So the problem for Mark is the way that the 9 and 11 are positioned, it kind of allows Efren to go up table. Like that. Look at how he's hit this ball. Wow. So, pointing out the 9 and 11, they don't go in Mark's pocket. They're tied up, basically. It allowed Efren to hit this object ball more accurately with a little inside spin. Mark has to be proud of what he's done this match. He's had ball leads and at least a tied ball game mid-match of every game in this match. So congratulations to him. I'm sure he enjoyed it. And then the legend, Efren Batabarea, is playing for one and to advance into round number two. I am your host, Scott Frost, the Freezer. Thank you all for showing up. Congratulations to Mark Payton for giving Efren a little bit of a fight. And until next time, we'll see you soon.